So, uh, here's another update of the Force Tent Caterpillar Invasion of 2014. Here's one of my Saskatoons with one of the last holdouts still on them there. You can see they've completely stripped this guy. Completely stripped him. It was one of the preferred choices for the uh, tent caterpillars. It was the first thing they went for. Um, the devastation has been unbelievable. It is uh, late June and while it's cold here, we're still supposed to have leaves in June. And as you can see all around us here, it's been completely defoliated. There's and they're still there. They're still there. Still there looking for things to eat. Obviously they haven't eaten the evergreens, but the aspen, the black poplar, the birch, um alder, willow, it's all uh it's all fallen to them. Some are not, right? That's right, some haven't, and we've been pretty happy about that. None of the non-woody plants have suffered. Uh, this is, and this is a surprise too, this is gooseberry. And they're on it, but they're not eating it yet. Um, hoping that it's not just a case of them, you know, getting to it last because it's its least preferred food source. Um, there it is again. Nanking cherry they ate. Any, uh, apple, crab apple, anything of that nature has, has suffered. This here is a uh, is a sea buckthorn, and it seems to be making it through it. <clears throat> Over there, that big bushy one is a black currant, and it's covered with them. And uh, clearly, they don't like eating it. I'm thinking that the oils <clears throat> are too strong for them. The red currants have been eaten, but the black ones haven't. And anyone who knows anything about black currants, they've got a real pungy aroma. And I, I think that's, you know, the oil associated with that aroma must be keeping them at bay. Uh, the lupins and all the non-woody plants have survived really well. Um, the only exception to that is strawberry. They went right for these guys. They're still going Whoa, on. Oh, They don't look so good, eh? Yeah. Yeah, they devastated them. They're dead. Yes, that's my son Mac. Say hi, Mac. Hi. <laughs> and my dog Squeak. <clears throat> so it's uh, it's been tough to see. Yeah, it's been tough to see and watch this happen. You know, we were hoping to uh, get a lot of growth in the Saskatoons this year. Just didn't uh, wasn't wasn't to be. Wasn't to be. Um, but, uh, this is a good testimonial to, uh, uh, polyculture. You know, we, we didn't throw all our eggs in one basket. We have gooseberry and we have blackcurrant and rhubarb and, and flowers despite the devastation. Um, <clears throat> we're not selling any this year, but, uh, it is good to know that we could have something this devastating and this is about as bad as it gets. Uh, something this devastating come through the orchard <clears throat> and we still have things that we can count on that are going to survive this and be strong through it. I'm uh, of the understanding that uh, many of our plants hey, look, uh, that have been defoliated her. nice buddy many of the plants that have been defoliated will survive they'll grow leaves after it's just we're gonna lose that beautiful growth that you get in june early july <clears throat> um, and we needed that to go into production in two years uh to be able to open our u pick and uh it looks like that's not gonna happen look at them go on that red current there that's crazy um we did break down we uh used some malathion uh, it's a contact pesticide, so you'd have to contact every single one of these guys. Look at that. I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to be out here every day trying to spray all of these? I guess some people would attempt that, but uh, 
you know, for me, this is a part-time job, part-time gig. I'm, I'm out of town here a little ways. Just not a possibility. Uh, so we faced the, uh, you know, we're facing this tough time and just sucking it up and, and, uh, uh, we'll, we're learning as much as we can about these guys from this and uh, we'll just go from there uh, hopefully you guys uh, took a few lessons from here or two, a few interesting things we certainly learned a lot um, and, and we'll definitely make some changes for next year we're either going to put some screens on our raspberries or whatever things that we can put uh, you know, some fabric on or we're going to rely on chickens to, uh, to eat this wonderful smorgasbord of, uh, of caterpillar protein. And I'm, I've heard conflicting uh, opinions as to whether or not chickens will actually eat these guys. But uh, I'm of the opinion that uh, if this is what's here and this is all that's here, as cruel as that may be to the chicken, they are going to eat these. And certainly there's no lack of protein. If any of you guys know of a reason why that would be harmful to the chickens, let me know. I would like to learn. Uh, anything that you guys can offer me would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Uh, just one note here. It's an interesting thought. You know, uh, nature was the first god of man. And uh, I think she will be the last... And it's clear, you know, when you have these agricultural operations that you put so much energy and time and, and love and attention into and, and to watch things like this happen to them, it's, it's clear why that's the case. Anyway, take care.